me in the middle of reading Call It Sleep by Henry Roth. Um, but I'm here to answer some of your questions because I am the profile of the month. And I have brought along my lovely assistant, Ben, who is behind the camera, to um, help me with this. So, Ben, the first question, if you please. All right. Melly from Toronto asks, yes. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Melly. I was just wondering is what... Is it Mel E or Melly? Melly, M-E-L-I. Oh, I, I hey, think... Melly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Melly was just wondering what really got you into musical theater. And Anonymous adds, were you in shows growing up? And if so, which ones? Um, well, I was in a lot of shows growing up. Um, but I'll answer the first part of that question first. I think what got me into musical theater was one fateful day when um, me and my sisters were bored in our house. And randomly, I don't remember on what channel, <laughs> I don't know what that noise was, it's okay, we'll ignore it. Um, a funny girl was on, and I was about, I probably was like 10 or 11, so I didn't really quite understand what was happening. But my mom, my mom said, this is a good movie, you guys should watch it. So we watched Funny Girl, and I was like so obsessed with all the songs. I used to sing Don't Rain on My Parade <laughs> so much. And I'm the greatest star. And I like fell in love with Barbra Streisand. And from that moment on, I think I wanted to be in musicals. Um, but in terms of like shows growing up, I, I didn't start actually doing shows. So I was very shy as a child until I was 14. And my first one, actually, ironically enough, was Funny Girl. But I did, like, I did Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and I did West Side Story, I was Maria, you know, and, like, typical, typical, sh <laughs> typical shows. All right. All right. Okay. Next. A Angelo from Guam. Hi, Angelo. Asks, Guam. Where's Guam been? Um. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> he doesn't know either. Sorry, guys. Um, we'll look I want to say it's in this. the Pacific. Somewhere. It it's could, an island, right? It's an island, but it also could be in um, the Caribbean. I'm, oh. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. He, first, he says, first of all, he just wants to say you're awesome. Oh, thank you, Angelo. All right. What were your expectations when you were still in Emerson College? Did you like Emerson? Oh, I loved Emerson. It was so much fun. Um... My expectations, I don't know if I had per expectations per se. I mean, like, ideally I, I wanted to work or else, like, I just spent a whole lot of money for nothing. Um, but I knew this is what I wanted to do, so I just, there was no doubt in my mind that I'd somehow do it. And then I found a way. And here I am, doing what I love. Cool. And just for everyone at home, I just looked up where Guam was, and it is in, uh, the Western Pacific Ocean. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Maybe one day we'll go. Spring Awakening in Guam. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's do it. Just Next... you and me, though. Yeah, no one else. A two-person production. Yes. Okay, Mel asks, Hey, oh, Gabby. Oh, another Mel. Not a Mel-E. No, this a is Mel. just Mel. All right. Hey, Gabby, you are amazing in the show. Oh. I love your singing voice, and you are so sweet. That's at very the stage nice. Door. <laughs> what was your audition <laughs> experience nice. for Spring Awakening like? What did you sing for them? Anonymous adds, which cast members did you meet during your audition? Oh, um, well, I've had sort of a, a long audition process. Originally, I mean, I was living in New York and auditioning for shows when I went in, and originally I was up for um, a Broadway replacement, and then when I didn't get that, they kept me on file for the tour. So I went in and auditioned for the tour, um, and I ended up getting that. Uh, I think w the first thing I sang was Beautiful Disaster by Kelly Clarkson. Um, and then they have you sing stuff from the show. So I sang like Blue Wind and, you know, my junk and stuff. Um, but who did I meet? I think I, I met... Oh, I talked to Sarah. She was sitting next to me um, when we had our audition and she was... Um, talking about how nervous she was, and she said, wouldn't it be weird if we were both in it? And I said, yes, and then we were both <laughs> in it. Um, so I met Sarah. Um, I met, I think I saw Ben. I saw yeah. Andy. I was very shy. I didn't talk to a lot of people. Like, I saw these people, and I'm like, oh, they look so nice. But I was, like, way too shy to um, 
you know, start up conversation. So I think Sarah, Ben, Andy, Anthony, um, and that might be it. Okay, Nicole asks, if you were queen for the day, what rules would you enforce and what would you make everyone do? Oh, no! If I was queen for a day, well, that would be quite a day, wouldn't it? Um, I, I don't know. It, I guess suppose I'll do one, a serious one, and then a silly one. So if I was queen for a day, seriously, I would say that everyone had to perform one random act of kindness to another person because the world needs just a little bit more kindness. Um, and a silly the one. world needs now is love, sweet love. Anyway, um, <laughs> but a silly one oh, <laughs> that I would just do to get amusement out of life. Um, I don't know, like, I would make, uh, I, I don't know what I would do. Ben, what, what do you think I should what should do? Um, make a silly thing to make people do. Maybe, uh... Oh, um, no one is allowed to uh, eat tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Or salmon. <laughs> Good idea. So I don't like creatures of the sea. Or Or tomatoes. tomatoes <laughs> separately. Okay, Anonymous asks, when you meet fans at the stage door, do you sometimes get annoyed with signing autographs over and over? Um, well, Anonymous, not really, because it doesn't take a lot of time to um, sign things. The only thing is, is I'm, again, very shy, so it's sometimes awkward when we're in line and people don't come up to you because I feel awkward going up to people and saying like, hey, do you want me to sign your playbill? Mm -hmm. um, just because I'm so shy and it's like, it's very weird for all of us to have people like want to stay after and talk to us because we're all just like normal nerdy people. So it's still, <laughs> ben, ben gave me a look that said, speak for yourself. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just always find it strange. So I get very shy and unless someone comes up and asks, for my autograph, I usually won't go over and, and talk to them because I don't, m mostly because I just don't know what to say. Okay. Anonymous asks, another anonymous, do you have a celebrity crush? If so, who is it? Ugh, anonymous. I was hoping this question wouldn't come up. <laughs> um, well, besides the obvious, which is Blake Bashoff, who is my number one celebrity crush, um, I am absolutely in love with Paul Rudd the star of such um, films as Clueless, I Love You Man, recently. Um, he was in Knocked Up, I think, right? He's in a lot of stuff. He is so funny. He is so cute. Oh, yeah, he was he in is, He's just a dreamboat. Um, and that's, like, my ideal man. Okay. Anonymous asks, Hey, Gabby, do you guys have fun making the extended run videos? <laughs> Any funny moments and slash memories while filming? <laughs> um, oh, extended run is so much fun to do. Um, because it's just, we're just like a goofing off and Perry is just such a dork. Um, <laughs> so it's lots of fun. Um, go uh, funny goofs. Um, you know, I can't like really think of any and, um, off the top of my head per se, outtakes, um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to say no, not me personally, but perhaps Anonymous can ask another profile of the month if they have any, and they might, I just don't. Okay, Laura asks. Oh, hey, Laura. Gabby! Smiley face. <laughs> if you were to pick someone from the cast as your roommate for a year, who would it be? Oh, the whole year.